Variation. Why statistical methods are needed. Variation is everywhere. It has practical implications. This is why statistical methods are used to make sense of data. There are several sources of variation in data. Today we're going to talk about 1. Natural or real variation. 2. Explainable variation, sometimes called confounding. 3. Sampling error or variation. And 4. Error due to biased sampling. For example, say we want to know how many texts on average a 19-year-old student sends in a day on their mobile phone. This could be useful when setting up a pricing scheme to attract students. We could ask one 19-year-old student, what's wrong with doing it this way? Um, because not all students send the same number of texts. That's right. Reason number one, there is natural variation. If all students did send the same number of texts in a day, taking a sample of one would give us all the information we need. But students don't send the same number of texts in a day. And this is true of almost all human, natural and manufacturing processes. There will be variation. Are there any other reasons why asking one student wouldn't give us the average for all 19-year-old students? Um, there are different types of students. Maybe girls send more texts than boys, or rich students send more? Absolutely. This could be called explainable variation, and in some statistical tests we try to find out things like the differences between groups, such as males and females, or maybe the relationship between age and the number of texts sent. We try to see what variation we can attribute to known influences. Let's look at other sources of variation. Say I took a sample of five students and you took a sample of five students. Do you think we would get the same mean or average? Um, it's not likely. Like, no. That's right. Why do you think that is? Because we chose different people. Great. That's another kind of variation. The fact that we chose different people is related to what is often called sampling error. Because we are looking at a selection or sample of the population, we are not getting all the information. And there are almost infinite different samples we could take, each with their own mean. Is it sampling error because we take a bad sample, like the one that is all males or all rich dudes? Not really. With a small sample like five, that could happen by chance, which wouldn't make it a bad sample, though it would not be representative of the population. However, if we did something silly in our sampling, like only asking the girls or not asking a certain group, then we would reduce the randomness of the sample. We would get error due to sampling bias. Sometimes it can be difficult to avoid sampling bias. Badly worded questions and self-selection of sample members can also cause bias. But what if we are really careful to take a random sample? Do we still get sampling error? Yes. Sampling error exists because a sample is not the complete picture of the population. Even perfectly random samples have sampling error. What if you take a larger percentage of the population? Would that reduce your sampling error? Well, yes and no. Strangely enough, unless the population is really small, what matters is the size of the sample, not the percentage of the population it represents. So a sample of 100 from a population of 1 million is just as useful as a sample of 100 from a population of 10,000. The sample size, known as n, is what matters. The larger the sample is, the less influence sampling error will have on the information we get. You can see this illustrated in the companion video on confidence intervals. So what do you do with all this variation? If you know about statistics, you can examine the data in such a way that you can get an idea of where the different variation comes from. And you can estimate what influence sampling error will have on the results. Right.